Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Haltech Q&A, where we answer the questions that you've asked during the week. Our first question today comes from Tay. What ECU would you recommend for a bridge ported 13B, so that's a rotary engine, with the same ECU work on a 20B? Well, Tay, thanks very much for the, the question. If you've got a third MB engine or a two rotor engine, you'd be after the Elite 1000 or the Elite 1500 series ECU because they've got four injector outputs and four ignition outputs. This will be enough to control your two rotor engine in sequential staged injection and direct fire ignition. If you decided to use the 20B or the three rotor engine, you're gonna need at least six injector outputs and definitely six ignition outputs. So you'd be after the Elite 2000 or the Elite 2500 series ECU if you decided to add drive-by-wire throttle. Our second question today comes from Podwell. Is knock control only for race cars or should I have it in a modified street car too? Podwell, it's a good question. Knock control should be used in all street and racing applications. This will allow the ECU to make changes to the ignition mapping if any potentially catastrophic knock or detonation events occur. These detonation events could be because of things like a bad batch of fuel, differences in temperature, or a fuel system failure, like a bad fuel pump or a bad injector. Our third question today comes from the Track King. Would the advanced torque management function be useful in circuit or time attack racing, or is it strictly a drag racing thing? This is a really good question as well. The torque management function works by adjusting the fuel, ignition, boost and throttle angle based on a drive shaft target curve versus time. This drive shaft curve requires a starting point, which is normally the start of a drag race. During a circuit race, there's no consistent point to start the torque management, so it wouldn't really be of any use. In a circuit racing application, use our traction control function, which allows you to program an amount of allowable slip between your front and rear wheels. Well, that's all our Q&A questions for today. As always, thanks very much for sending them in. Don't forget to send your questions so I can answer them next week. My name's Scott and I'll see you next time.